Hi therapists and parents. Let's talk about motivation operation or motivating operation. So MOs can be established establishing or abolishing. It can increase the value of the reinforcement or decrease it. So think about, you know, when you um for example, you know, has just exercised um, or um, you know, ran a mile and you're extremely thirsty and you need water. Now, the value of water is extremely high at this moment because you're very thirsty. But think if also you are um, in your room or office or, you know, somewhere where you have access to water at any time, the fridge is right next to you, um, you can get water. The value of water is not as high uh, because you're not thirsty, you have access to the water all day. So the motivation operation uh, could be high or low depending on the value of the enforcement. So let's think of again you being thirsty uh, and wanting to get water uh, and uh, knowing that you know going into the supermarket to buy water is something you need to do. It's a behavior. Uh, you're most likely to do it if, again, this motivating operation is high, the water value is high. So we also work with kids in a way to see how can we get them to do this behavior? How can we have the motivating operation uh, establishing and the enforcement we about to give them with high value? So first thing you need to do as a therapist or as a parent is not to have um, this reinforcement or enforcers, um, you know, in reach all day. The child should not have access to the same things you're using to enforce him. So if he has a tablet all day to play games and you tell him, I'm going to give you the tablet to play games if you do your homework, there is no value to the tablet, you know, because he's been playing on it the whole day. Uh, there's no motivation for him to do the homework because the enforcement does not have any value. So that's what we mean by motivation operation. Okay. So there's a establishing and there's a polishing. It can increase the value of the enforcement or decrease it. So here's the same example again. If you have been running for a long time, the value of water will increase. So the establishing operation momentarily increases the value of the enforcer, causing specific behavior to occur in order to access the water. Um, when we're teaching kids to request or demand for something, we usually have this thing, maybe they could see it, but they don't have access to it the whole day. Uh, so a kid who loves to eat apples should not be given apple all day and then expected to say the word apple or repeat the word apple after you to get an apple. He already had he been eating apples all day. So there's no motivation for him to say the word apple. However, if you, um, for example, cut the apple into slices during you know his snack time, and you want to teach him the word apple, and every time you present a slice, you say you you ask him to say apple, and then after he repeats it or attempt to repeat it, you give him the apple. Then, you know that's something they may be able to. Um, that's a behavior you may be able to enforce, and you may see results because you've not been giving him apples all day. Okay, now a polishing operation. Uh, it's something that, you know, which momentarily decreases the value of the enforcer, as I just mentioned. If you have been eating candy all day, getting candy after a task will not be valuable and therefore might result in not performing the task. Okay. A lot of times in feeding programs when kids, um, you know, kids with autism may be very picky eater or they, eaters or they may um, be, uh, you know, um, very sensitive to certain textures. Um, and we try to introduce these textures maybe gradually, uh, in, you know, very small, um, you know, chunks, or we maybe, um, you know, uh, put it in some other, like, uh, combine it or mix it with some other ingredients. Um, we make sure when we start the feeding program, the kid is hungry. So then the value of food is high and they're able 
to try because if they're full, they're not going to even attempt to try something new. Um, so it's very important for the child to be hungry, meaning we're not going to like leave them to starve, but at the same time, we're not going to give them the snacks they get maybe in between meals. So when meal time is, uh, you know, uh, it's a time to uh, eat, then we can start our feeding program, whatever feeding program we're using with them. But you don't want a kid who is um, happy and full and satisfied with food uh, to start a feeding program. He will not attempt to even look at the food. So motivation operation is extremely important when we're teaching new behaviors, when we're teaching uh, behaviors that we want to increase, uh, because again, the enforcement value should be something uh, that's, you know, uh, high or has increased based on what the child has been getting the whole day. And therefore, um, if, uh, you know, you know that your child loves going in the backyard to play and you're using this as an enforcement after doing work, you should not have him spend half of the day outside and then ask him to come inside to do homework, to go outside again as an enforcement. Uh, that would definitely not have him um, do anything you ask because the enforcement, he's satiated. He, he's already been uh, doing what you've um, using as enforcer enforcement the whole day. So it's not enforcing anymore. Uh, so, okay, again, pay attention to what you're doing with your child. Uh, if you, you want them to perform a task, make sure the enforcement is not something that they've been using or doing all day. Uh, make sure, uh, you know, um, that it is, it is of a high value and maybe something they're not, they don't have access to every day. Thanks for listening.